Ed, let me tell you something right now. If your wet bed is about as dry as the toilet paper I wipe my butt with, it is not a wet bed. Yeah, we use the wet bed to help blend the color out. The wet bed ain't doing nothing, man. If it's dry, it ain't doing nothing. All right. Colbert Speed Recovery Finish Network. All right, so I am honored today. My old boss came. She needed some stuff done on her uh, SUV. It's nice. 07 Acura MDX. Still kicking, still drives great. Drives like brand new. However, over the years, she's accumulated some scratches in the back quarter panel and in the back door. And there's also some scratches in the rear bumper, so we're going to go ahead and do a nice big blend. Now, when it comes to blending metallic colors, um, we're in the body shop today. I'm going to be doing a more higher scale professional repair. I'm going to show you guys today how to actually use Color Blender and make a real wet bed for your metallics. To, to land in, okay, so you don't get that that's crusty edge, whatever. A lot of auto body guys out there doing wet beds. Let me tell you something right now. If your wet bed is about as dry as the toilet paper I wipe my butt with, it is not a wet bed. Yeah, we use the wet bed to help blend the color out. The wet bed ain't doing nothing, man. If it's dry, it ain't doing nothing, all right? The purpose of a wet bed is so that when you're spraying them metallics, Right, right in here where the scratches are. Boom, boom, boom. All the overspray is gonna land flat and, and land in that wet bed and create a smoother finish. I'm also gonna show you guys today a couple of options when it comes to clear coat. If you got snow on the ground and if you ain't a wussy boy, <laughs> if you ain't a wussy boy and you ain't afraid of painting the cold. All right, we're not using any heat in the shop. I'm not turning on the heaters, not doing nothing. All right, I'm going to show you guys the exact materials you need to do that. First things first, this thing is filthy. We're going to get this thing cleaned up. I am not even playing around. We got the Speedo Coat Acid Wheel Cleaner. I'm spraying this over the whole truck. We're going to get this thing clean, dried off, and we're going to start working on it. Catch you guys on the paint side. Now, for those of you auto body police that don't know what this is, this is this right here is a adhesion promoter. So as that soda dries up, it gets real sticky, and it's going to help our body filler stick real nice to this panel. 
um, along with the adhesion that the poly putty already provides it's just gonna help that adhesion now we ain't wasting no time we ain't slacking uh, while that filler's drying we're gonna go ahead and buzz down these panels with 800 grit just to give it a good scratch so that way our color blender and our clear will stick so I'm just kind of lightly just going around all the edges, not going too crazy. Anything I miss with the sander, I can always go ahead, grab a soft pad, do a little bit by hand, and then anything that my sandpaper by hand misses, I can make up the difference with a gray scotch pad. Now for our blend, I want this blend to last. Normally, blends, I gray scotch pad and I go, but I decided to 2000 grit sand it, really get that blend zone to have some real good adhesion. This right here is just a little bit of universal window cleaner. I went ahead and wiped down the panels with some window cleaner just to give it a good pre-clean before I do my pre-paint clean. As far as taping up, I have a lot of people ask me, hey, how do you tape, how do you tape? Look, man, just slap the paper on the panel, line up your trim lines, line everything up, fill in the gaps. Um, razor blade helps a lot. And then whatever you don't make up with the paper, just go ahead and make up the difference with your tape. Make it look as good as possible and let it rip. Now this is the most crucial step of this job, is the color blender and the base. So the color blender, mix it one to one, sometimes I like to throw just a hair extra reducer in there. We're spraying with my Mark I Eco Spray Gun. So we got the pressure right around 20, 20 to 21 PSI. We are wetting down everything around our repair areas. Everything surrounding the repairs, we're wetting it down. Okay, and then we're going to move immediately into our base coat um, while this is still wet because we want our metallics to land in there. As you guys can see, you guys can see the coverage I'm getting. That's because I'm not using crap paint. All right, use good quality paint. You work less. Now, you might spend an extra dollar or two, but you're going to work less. You're going to get better coverage. You're going to get a better professional job. So we got our areas covered uh first coat one coat and done and then we went ahead even on the first coat we started to flick that base out and started to get our blend uh going if you know what i mean and it's looking pretty good all right so quick pause in the video i want to explain this this is why you don't let the wet bed dry before you base look at how smooth and glossy Metallics like to leave a rough edge, even if you're using slow reducer. Sometimes it will leave a rough edge, especially if you're, you know, kind of fogging it out trying to get that blend. Look at that. Look at that. We were fogging that paint, not laying it on real dry, but look at how smooth that looks. Okay? That's why you don't let the wet bed dry. You spray your base while the bed is wet. That way it lands in there and it all becomes one. Back bumper, I still got to do a little more work on. I'm not super happy with that. It's got a real coarse kind of blotchy look. That's okay. We're going to clean that up on the second coat. Now, is this wet bed going to stay wet through the second coat? It might stay a little tacky. That's okay. We're going to get more color blender. We're going to mix our base one to one with the color blender and then blend and fade out our color even more. And this is all going to look good. Just wanted to show you guys that. I'll catch you guys on the second coat of base. He's one of the best scientific minds we have today.
three really good options when it comes to clear coating and very cold weather. SMR135, great for used cars, um, great for cars that have just a tiny bit of fade, but this clear coat will still put out a really good gloss, but just not super glossy like the uh, super fast high gloss clear coat. This will is great for like newer cars that have really, really good shine. Um, this clear coat, um, it's a low to medium solids, but will put out a really, really good shine. And then we have the SMR 110. Now this is the extremely fast dry clear. Um, this will dry all the way down in 25, 20 to 25 degree temps. These are three really good options when it comes to very cold weather painting. However, I did promise you guys that I would be doing a SMR 32 clear coat review, which I have not done yet. So I am risking it for the biscuit for you guys. And I'm spraying this clear first time on camera, uncut, never sprayed it, never tested it, no nothing. Um, and let me tell you, that first coat of clear, boy, that clear, that first coat worked me. As you guys can see, look in the camera, look at how the clear is going down. It ain't going down. <laughs> I had to double back on this clear a couple of times to get it to lay flat. And that's simply because of how high solids this clear is. Is this higher solids than the SMR42, uh, at least from what I experienced. Um, it was very, very uh, hard to work with, but I was able to get it down. And man, it started slicking out and it started looking like glass. And I, and I really started to have a good time with it once I got used to it. So there you guys have it, how to do a wet bed, okay? A lot of people ask, I get this question all the time, how do you use Color Blender? How do you, how do, you do a wet bed? How do you blend out your color? This is exactly the professional way to do it. There is absolutely zero, and I mean zero imperfections in the color and the blend in this job. It is perfect. We got absolutely zero color on this line right here and the little bit of color minor shade difference that you're seeing is just because this isn't buffed and it's very dull clear coat 
and this is glossy. That will change the shade just a little bit. Once the rest of this is all buffed out, it'll all look relatively similar. Um, zero issues with any of the color, any of the metallics, no blotchiness, no nothing. The SMR32, wow. <laughs> this stuff is thicker than a 20 ounce ribeye at Texas Roadhouse on a Friday night. It was thick. This stuff was so thick, Marco from Speedo Coat Refinish Network, the Speedo Coat God, had trouble laying it down and getting it flat. And I put on that first coat and I was like, it's cold outside, I'm not going to go crazy with it. I put the first coat down, I got back to the bumper and I'm looking back at the door, I'm like, that is not even close to flat. I had to double back on it and just do another light spritz over just to get it to get it all one smooth even seal coat. It was it was hard. But I will tell you the the stress that you go through to get this clear coat down, man was it worth it. By the time I let that first coat level out and just flatten out and I stood back, I left it alone even though it didn't look perfect. And then I came back and put a second coat on it. Dude, this clear coat with only two coats. This is this stuff is thicker than the SMR42. And the SMR42 is already thick stuff. This stuff is thicker than that. I mean, it, it, it was ridiculous. But the build, the build you get out of this clear is unbelievable. I'm just going to do a, a real close up, guys. I mean, that's right on it. You guys can see it got a couple nibs of trash, but it is a relatively clean job. But just the bit, like, the build on it. Once again, it's not perfect. This is my first time spraying SMR32. So I probably could have got down a little bit better with some experience. But it is thick and glossy and wet. I mean, it is just nice. Um, as usual, the collar blender from Speedo Coat, this is the DIY hack to getting a professional result right out of your garage. Yes, do I have a 9,000 square foot body shop? Yes. Do I have more than the normal DIY person? Yes. But I'm not in no $3 million body shop. I don't have a paint booth. I don't have UV cure lights and all the, the additional lighting I should have as a professional. I don't have all that. And we're still getting professional quality of results as you guys can see first time ever using this clear coat and it was also 35 degrees when i was spraying this clear i got one little sag right under the door handle and all i gotta do is clip the head off of that sand that flat that's gone and one little one right there and i also still got to remove my foam tape the only other imperfection i had in this job i got a little bit of a hard line in the tape i taped it all the way up here thinking that it was there's no clear that was going to get up here wrong this is why you never tape hard lines when it comes to anywhere near your blend zone never tape a line all i gotta do take a little bit of rubbing compound by hand and just rub that out and that'll be perfectly fine i can fix that in about 30 seconds the rest of this thing in retrospect for a 2007 acura suv perfect freaking blend perfect job I mean, I, I really tried to give you guys, you know, the best of the best on this job. Um, headlights, beautiful. Two full coats of clear on those. This one came out a little bit cleaner than this one. I, this thing has definitely been an accident because the headlights are different. But still, regardless, I mean, look at that. No trash in them, no nothing. I mean, they're freaking clean. You guys are looking for some of the best, most affordable auto body products in the world. Head on over to www.speedercoat.com. Check out our award-winning clear coats. We have some of the best clear coats in the world. That's factual. They've been rated by multiple different wet car websites. Check us out. We got that. We have everything you need start to finish to get your projects done, including base coat, sandpaper, you name it. We have it. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like, subscribe. New videos every week.